Michael Fakers have a great chance to take top spot in the table after Montpellier slipped up with their first loss in round five of the competition. Today, they take on the Exeter Chiefs, and a win will be all they need for a subscriber side to top the table for the first time in season three. Hello, everyone, and welcome on to Cornflakes Group, your home of Rugby Challenge 3 in the subscriber series, where you guys take the field against the world's elite. Today, it is the Exeter Chiefs up against the Cornflakers in what could only be described as a potential top-of-the-table win for the Flakers if they can get the job done. The Exeter Chiefs won't be striking fear into many of the Flakers following their performances in the competition so far. It's been pretty average but somewhat tough displays in their most recent performances. They went down 14 points to 7 to the Celtic Dragons and they were thumped before that by the All Flakes, 28-7. But both times they've shown they can get on the scoreboard. If their defensive ever can step up a gear, they could be a team that could show a bit of fear. This side sits 8th in the division so far and with names throughout the squad that you can consider really up there international players, they should be performing a lot better than they are. Still questionable about the side is the addition of Cuthbert in the second row alongside Hill who is going to be one to watch out for if he gets the ball in open space. The front row has performed well. Hepburn, Cowan, Dickey and Holmes have been up there with the best of the sides. But they're often let down with the finishing of the back line. Simmons, Hill, Campag, Naro, Woodburn, Noel and Turner. Guys that can finish, guys that can create. But they've let themselves down, not scoring more than once against the subscriber side so far. Up against them will be the destroyers that are the Corn Flakers. They have not lost a game so far this season and only drawn once to the Celtic Dragons. This is a team that has performed very, very well and is very difficult to score points against as well. They are the only side that struggled to beat the Saracens. They did that last round with a 24-14 win and that gave them a little bit of a fright. Before that though, they thrashed the Lions 38 points to nil. They sit second and like we said, a win here today will put them in that number one spot, leapfrogging the, until last week, unbeaten Montpellier. Their team has gone a few mix-ups as well, but this week we'll be starting with the front row. Austin Wheeler will be alongside Zaza Kogulska. And then on the tight end side will be Raba Raba yet again. Into the second row, a bit of a change round here. Peter Matthews gets the start of four, and Joel Caprista comes in to partner him at five. It's an interesting looking back row, which could be good or could put question marks Guys normally in the front or second row moving to the back row this week with Chris Smith at six and McDonald on the open side and at number eight once again is the big man Connor Nicholson. The open side, the blind side, watch those two guys and how they perform in these new positions. Chip Brook the player will start at scrum half of Cannon Nicholson starting alongside big brother Connor in the number 10 jumper. It's a dangerous midfield. We've seen Ethan Holton. He has torn defences up this season and looks set to do it again tonight for the Flakers. Alongside him in midfield will be Desmond Uni and in the back three will consist of the try scoring machine Prince Mars Williamson, Rock McCartney and of course at fullback Michael Gurren. It's dangerous and will look to set the Flakers alight from the back. Round six of season three looks about to get underway. It is the Flakers in the yellow and purple. It is the Exeter Chiefs in their home black and white strips. And it is Cannon Nicholson with the ball on halfway. A slow breeze going from right to left as we look at it now as the two sides look set to get underway. Referee blows the whistle and underway we go. Exeter Chiefs receiving the ball. And it is the Flakers looking to charge hard into the week here against their opponents, the Chiefs, who have looked like a team that could promise a bit, Release. but Australia struggled to put it together so far this season. They're going one-offs here with Luke Cowan Dickey charging forward for the black and white. Advantage. Here is Waldron with a forward pass, looking to his number 10, Joe Simmons. And the first error, like we've talked about already, going by the Exeter Chiefs. Here it was, and oh, that was a, that was a marginal Crouch. call. Zaza Kukulska definitely not playing for the whistle on that one. Set. As he put in a big shot there on his opposition number 10. The little hooker has been under fire this season, but he's put in a couple of good performances recently. Yes, a big run from Nicholson. And Connor Nicholson charges his way off the back of the scrum. Now to prayer. He's got numbers on the short side. Matthew, he's got work away to McCartney. McCartney down the wing. McCartney will want to beat. Great tackle, Turner. And 
turnover for the Chiefs. It was a one-on play, and it's turned into a turnover. Please. And that is what you want to see from your defensive effort. Here is the run down the short side from Hill before they keep the offloads alive nicely. And Cal and Dickey once again takes it into contact. Here's Waldrop. Forward pass. Last time he touched it. This time he finds Greg Holmes, who takes it sideways for going into the contact once more. Armand going Grace. backwards as the Flakers defense looks very much up to the battle so far early on. Wide from White as now we get a bit of expansive play. And it's kicked away eventually from Jack Noll. Up over halfway in the dangerous. Michael Gurren runs it back. Just Grace. about through one defender. And it's action packed as De Brea. Fires a wide to McDonald, Kukulska in tow. Here he is, the try scoring machine of Prince Miles Williamson. Stop first, time of asking is again this room down here for the prayer. Temperance to prayer, support from Holton, and Ethan Holton knocks on. Oh, that is a blowing chance as a big tackle from Joel Cabrista puts the defender into touch. But how about that explosive play? Down the short side, tipped out to prayer inside to Ethan Holton, who couldn't handle the hot potato. Ouch. Find. Scrum pack down now for Shit. Nick White and his six forward pack. <laughs> feet to it. Through the feet of Cowan Dick into the back to Thomas Walter. Waiting patiently, they've been blown off, and though the Chiefs it could be a turnover. This will be a massive play. It's quickly up. Connor Nicholson running to the right. To prayer. Nicholson. Cannon Nicholson to Holton. And Desmayuni. Turnover of the scrum. Try time flakers. Simple, easy, and explosive. The Chiefs defense could not regather after losing that scrum so late. A late charge. The ball just got plowed forward and into the path of the Flakers back rowers. Look at this beautiful work. And Desmond Uni just dives over in front of the feet. Oh, but Lockie Turner. Numbers created straight away by the run of Colin Nicholson. And I went through Cannon Nicholson, Ethan Holton, and eventually the try scorer. His first of the season, if I'm not mistaken, Desmond Uni. Great work from the number 13. And there's still numbers to burn on the outside too, if required. That is what you do. Quick turnover and big place being prepared is what it's all about and the Flakers on this occasion well and truly ready for the turnover ball and next to the Chiefs well they were completely up the tree and out of the play straight away conversion is good from Cannon Nicholson and it's 7-0 Flakers lead the exit of the Chiefs but we've still only had 20 minutes took them a while to get going this game is very much still up in the air as Jack Noll. This is back underway with a dig kick down into the 22 of the Flakers and De Prayer. Oh, big tackle finds Nicholson away to Wheeler and here is Williamson already busting away. Oh, he's trying to find Ethan Holton on the inside but it's gone astray and the play breaks down very quickly. The way it goes to Nicholson who's looking to thump this one down the sideline. Well played, is it? No, it's a mistake. Lucky Turner, I'm sure he had his former line over it as he caught it, but he's brought it back. Mistake from the former Wallaby fullback. And this is just going to gift another chance to the Flakers. And you can't afford to do that against a team like this. It is Nicholson who was looking for something. Oh, death through the middle of the park. But he's not found anything there. And Camp Agnaro comes away with it for the Flakers. 27 minutes in, almost at half an hour. Coming away is home. They find plenty of support out here on the left hand side. And it's a terrible little kick away from Simmons. If it finds touch, they'll be happy. And McCartney lets it roll over the sideline. I don't know about that. They had numbers. They had plenty of support there. They should have really taken on that defense on the wing. But they'll take this bit of territory. They're going to lose the ball though, only second. Conjure up something in this line out, but Dupree is quickly given it away to Cannon Nicholson, who thumps us down the park and up to the 10 metre line now. And Ollie Woodburn runs it back. Nicholson chases hard and takes him down. Police. And Paul Skirrell's right there to help out as the offload comes in field. Slow ball is there for Hill, who turns around the corner and they quickly change directions once more. And it's beautiful work. Lee's getting it inside to Hepburn and Hepburn charging through the middle. Almost slow motion play there as they didn't want to tackle him. And somehow he's held onto the ball. It's a pick and go from Cuthbert. Finding room. Oh, what a play! And through they'll go and score! Sam Hill! Another one for the inside centre! Wow, that was too easy! Far too easy for the Chiefs! And a 7-5 kick to come! Who saw that coming? 
Sam Hill, brilliant work. Look at the flakers, they were so determined and so preoccupied with turning over that ball. Desmond Uni was way off the mark and there was no one home. Michael Gurren, here he is, watch him, smashing that ruck. We thought we had a guaranteed turnover there for the Flakers, but that's not what happened. It was ball kept for the Chiefs and a wide out pass to Sam Hill, who finishes with a great show of speed and acceleration and puts the Chiefs on the board. Well, 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 I didn't see that coming. A great pass and a great show of speed from Hill to bust away from the Flakers' only try scorer, Desmond Uni, to try score a try of his own. And now the conversion from Alex Cuthbert is through the sticks, and we have a tied up game 7 7. The Chiefs and the Flakers are back where they began five minutes to the break. Well, we weren't expecting this. The number one subscriber side versus a team that has been easily taken apart by the others. But we saw last round just what these AI sides can do when the Saracens really showed up against the Flakers and put them under a bit of pressure. This is a good run from Lees once Lees. more. Gets himself out of the 22. It's a pick and go from White. Oh, that is a big tackle on Nick White. On oh, a penalty! Oh, that is magical! Great work from the Flakers defence. And Nick White was wrapped up and taken before he knew what day it was. Time is ticking and the ball has gone straight to Cannon Nicholson with a chance to put the Flakers back in front as the teams will head to halftime. Seconds to go before the break. Not even that now. It's a halftime hooter has gone and Nicholson takes his time, steps up and an easy kick for a man of that calibre. Another three for the scoreboard and the Flakers will take the lead into the break. Ten points to seven. A lot tighter than we imagined, but the Exeter Chiefs have come to play in this round six clash against the Flakers. It is a close one. It's a tight one. It's 10-7. The Flakers at halftime lead the Exeter Chiefs. And boy, oh boy, it has been an interesting half of rugby as well. The Chiefs haven't really looked like they're going to trouble much, but they did enough in the late stages of the half to give themselves their only try and it is one try piece as well but Sam Hill with a brilliant run to really flip the tables on this matchup you can see possession has been with the Chiefs territory with the Flakers but what's interesting is there's no mention of line breaks which I think there's been a number by both sides that have been poorly finished either which way you look at it not many handling errors by either team just two by the Chiefs one by the Flakers which will please them very very much but the tackle count is where the action has come in over double by the Flakers in their first 40 and they do still lead they won't be happy of how this one is slipping away from them they want to dominate and they want to take number one spot on the table a loss here will be very detrimental towards their chances of getting that job done 10 points to 7, it is not over yet. It is the Flakers with work to do and next to the Chiefs with a little bit more work to do in the second half as they trail by 3, 10-7, the score at halftime. Who's got the moment of brilliance? Do we require it? What will the second half bring? Plenty of questions. Let's find out the answers as Jack Noel gets us back underway for the second half. The Flakers will be receiving and Chris Smith has got the ball. Down it goes to Cannon Nicholson who says I don't want to play down here. It's too dangerous. He kicks long and it's Advantage. picked up there nicely from Ken Pagnaro who's given it away to Jack Noel. And the pass, not Noel's fault. But forward is the call again. Turning around and there it was, the pass. Well, again, Crouch. the second time today. Bind. That you'd argue that that was a, a fair pass. Little things like that can really change this matchup. Oh, but a great shove! What a scrum by the Exeter Chiefs! They've thrown this ball over, but then, oh no! The Flakers with a late charge once again will hang on to it. Here's Connor Nicholson charging at the defenders and charging hard as well. A couple will go flying backwards. Here's Caprista, away to Chris Smith, finding room for Kenan Nicholson. He's got support out wide, puts in the little grubber. It's McCartney! Oh, what a finish! Rock McCartney! Rock in the world of the Flakers! 15-7, kick to come, and Kenan Nicholson take a bow. This is beautiful rugby. Spots a hole, 
draws defenders, grubber kick through, absolutely pinpoint. And how about that dive from McCartney as well? Tremendous work from the Flakers. Magical stuff from Nicholson. Oh, you've got to love it. You have to love every inch of that play to give them a big lead back now. It'll find the Chiefs having to score twice to get back in this game. One of the best we've seen in the series so far. Cannon Nicholson putting it on a silver platter for Rock McCartney, who hasn't been too prolific this season, but that is right up there with the best of the best. As Nicholson turns from provider to scorer of his own couple of points, and the lead now extends out to 10. As we said, it'll require two scores now from these boys, the Exeter Chiefs, to get back in the lead in this matchup, 17-7. Still a lot of water to go under this bridge before it is fully done. Underway we go again. Jack Noll with a deep kick down to McDonald. And then McDonald under pressure. Turnover straight away from the Chiefs. And an offload brilliantly as well. Finding Mikhail Campagnaro. Error earlier from him. But this time he makes up for it as it's Waldrum. Picking it up and looking to offload. Release. But doesn't get it away. White. Passing, finding room there is a beautiful run from Alex Cuthbert. We talked about the danger he can possess. Release. A big man with a lot of speed. They go short side. Oh, here, Burn, hammered, and turned over as well. Oh, it's a bad pass. It goes away to Holton, and Ethan Holton is looking to get rid of this. He's not, not he's not done the job at all. And it's a penalty to the Exeter Chiefs holding on in the tackle. Ethan Holton thought he had it under control. Not so. What do they do here? Well, they're taking the three. So that difference of that penalty should be wiped out here. Alex Cuthbert, who really created the chance, could bring it back to within seven. He does. Oh, we are in for one hell of a finish here, folks. It is 17-10. And the Corn Flakers have had their lead cut by three. That three they got just before halftime has been ultimately wiped out now as one score will get them on level terms and we are in for something to really get your blood flow and underway we go again Karen Nicholson with a deep kick down to the 22 of the Chiefs great offload as well from Armand as he finds it there to Noel this has got to be another penalty surely it is Yudi no he just turns it over and he gives it straight away back to the Chiefs that is terrible from the try scorer Barama Rama not to be Please. outdone here he's got it straight back for the Flakers, here's the prayer. Big ball wide, it's Connor Nicholson this time. Look at the play with Varner, it's Kukulska. Oh, the pass, so close to being another try for Rock McCartney. Well, we've seen it recently, forwards with big chances out wide, they just can't finish it off. To the speedsters. Oh, it's stolen from Cabrista. Away to Kendall Nicholson. Looking to do it alone. Kendall Nicholson. Oh, he's brilliant. He's superb. Nicholson scores alone. How many defenders did he take on his way? I counted at least three. Kendall Nicholson, cool as a cucumber, cold as ice. The veins are flowing. Look at this brilliant piece of work. Steps one, just the second was an ankle tap. The third was a good tackle but it was too late from Lockie Turner this is up there with the great tries of the GRC we've seen a brilliant one just before but that was solo brilliance look at this the creative juices are flowing well and truly for Cannon Nicholson he's not only is he accumulating points with the boots he's accumulating them with the tries and the feet as well now that was a golden try and you'd imagine that one should put the Chiefs to bed. The conversion is over. And 24 to 10 now requires two tries to level things up for the Exeter Chiefs. Three tries to get back in the lead. Converted or not, they require three. Well, they've had their chances. The Chiefs have really thrown everything at this game. Their last chance to impress, it has to be said. As this kick has gone high and Cabrista away to Dupreer. McDonald is out there. And the big man in the number seven jumper just puts his foot to it. And McCartney chases hard. He's, it's thrown back from Turner. Gives it to Woodburn. They keep it alive to Camp Agnaro as well. Near the own 22 here, the Exeter Chiefs. Got a long way to go. Cuthbert goes short. And a charging run from Cowan Dickey. 
Excellent run there from the hooker. Picky go this time from Leeds, finds room out wide. Excellent work from Sam Hill, find it to Ollie Woodburn. Leeds. Leeds taken to show the 10 metre line, finding metres with ease at the moment. Here's Waldrum. Going short, and a dangerous run again from Cuthbert, finding White, back to Ken Bagnaro, plenty of room through the middle, it's once again Waltram, and the big ginger here, you can't miss him a mile away, he charges through yet another tackle, up to halfway now they are, looking to the right hand side, White, good it goes White, good work there from Hill, as he gets away once more, support from Noel, if he needs it, oh, that was close, nice. that was really close to being a breaker. Over the 10 metre line now, Waldron once again, Campagnaro charging in the line, changing directions now as they keep it alive through Hill, going back inside, and a chance now for the Flakers, if they want it, they can't quite do it! Luke Cowan Dickey picks up, doesn't go to the short side, they turn it back the other way, and a brilliant piece of work, Joe Simmons inside, and it's once again Waldron! On the run from Simmons, that is a beautiful piece of play from the fly half, Campagnaro, oh dear! Campagnaro nice. going backwards. And this time it was the opposite hooker, Kukulska, doing the hard work. Kellen Dickey finds room out wide. The end for Hepburn once again, passing it back in the wardrobe. They all fighting, it's coming off leads. Once more room to his left side, they want it. There he goes full time. This could be all over. Is it going to be all over? No! The Chiefs hang on. A chance to give themselves a bonus point. And Cabrera Troy will do it. It's a terrible run from Hill. But they are inside the 22. Time is up. White, left side, Kellen Dickey doing very well and finding it out there to Armand once more. It's another run of the line. Waldrum, the way to Campagnaro, keeping alive as Hill. Back inside Waldrum again, and there it is falling down with Kellen Dickey. Right on the 22, Sam Hill scored one already. Back again to Waldrum. There's numbers out here. If they want to use them, it's a chance for Holmes. Holmes got one to beat. Oh, brilliant! Absolutely brilliant from Jack Noll and a support inside from Greg Holmes, who started it, giving it to Jack Noll, and he's finished it with a flurry. And the Exeter Chiefs should well pick up a bonus point. The home crowd, they roar with excitement. But Greg Holmes, take a look at this. Beat the tackle as well of Prince Miles Williamson. And I fear Jack Noll could have done that all alone. But he passed it back inside as the attempted tackle went flying wide of the mark. Watch this attempt here by fullback Michael Guerin. Well, he missed everything, didn't he? Absolutely missed it all. But closer to the sticks will it go. Greg Holmes, great finish. And the props flurry of tries continues in season three of the GRC. Well, we talked about it with last game. The Saracens really pulled it close against the Flakers, and today it has been much of the same. This one very even throughout, but that little period after halftime where the Flakers scored a couple of unanswered tries was enough to pull them through and enough to give them a seven-point win. Bonus points? I definitely think so. Four tries were scored, but for the Exeter Chiefs, I'll take one for losing within seven as well. Both sides really gave it a good goal. This result never looked like it was a foregone conclusion throughout the game. A close one, but the Chiefs just could not get that extra try when they required it or stop the flow of blood in that middle stage of the second half. Three tries to two, both of three or four conversions, and both sides with a penalty goal as well. 24-17. No, they only scored three tries. Wow. Yes, there was no bonus for a try. 28 would have been, it would have been 31, wouldn't have it? Yes, of course, my maths is not doing me well. No bonus points for the Flakers. They only scored three tries. Goodness me, what a matchup it's been. So enthralled with the overall score and actually winning the game. Bonus points were never a part of the calculation here tonight. A great performance by the Exeter Chiefs, and they should well be proud of how they've come out of their clash versus the best subscriber side so far this season. They will go top, but for the Chiefs, tries to Greg Holmes, and of course the cracker early on to Sam Hill got them underway. Two conversions from Cuthbert, and of course it was the second row, Alex Cuthbert, who picked up the penalty goal as well. As for the Flakers, Cannon Nicholson was sublime. He scored one of his own, he set up a little grubber through to Rock McCartney as well, and it was Desmond Udy who picked up the opener for the Flakers. Cannon Nicholson was three out of three from the conversions, and of course, a penalty goal on the stroke of half time put them up 10 7 at the break. Second half action was thick and fast. It was all over the place. It was 
one of the best clashes we've seen from a subscriber side against an AI side this season. 24-17, the final score, but have a look at those stats. The Chiefs really should have done a little bit better. They had 65% of possession, 52% of territory. They had everything going their way. Line breaks is there this time, though. We see the Chiefs only had three. The Flakers had six. That is still a pretty good conversion rate. Three tries and two tries. Ultimately, five out of nine line breaks were converted into tries. Handing errors were low, four by the Chiefs, just five by the Flakers. Both sides will be very happy with how this one has gone down with their hands and with their chances converted. But ultimately, one side has to lose. And today, once again, it'll be the exit of the Chiefs, but they'll take their one bonus point. The Flakers will take four to the top of the table. Well, fantastic clash to get round six underway. We'll have a look at the table in just a second, but next up is the big one, and this one, for no doubt, will be our Sunday premiere clash. So if you're new to the channel, this is your first subscriber clash you've watched. Tune in Sundays, whatever time it is in your part of the world, but it is 8 p.m. New Zealand time where we have a premiere matchup every single week. This week, we try to make it the big ones, and this is a big one as well. The Guardians of the Crib taking on one of the best AI sides this season, Leinster. The only team to have beaten Montpellier, and we will have Montpellier in the action very soon as well. But first things first, Leinster are at home against the Guardians of the Crib, who are the worst performing subscriber side as well. So this is going to be a cracker. But let's review today. Of course, it was a win for the Flakers, as, as you can see on the right-hand side. They are now top of the table. One point only ahead of Montpellier, who, of course, have an extra bonus point. No bonus point for the Flakers, of course. They uh, only scored three tries, but that was a tough game against the Exeter Chiefs, who jump up with one more point. They go one clear of the Lions, but I fear the Chiefs may well be climbing up that ladder soon. But the top three AI sides still the Crusaders, Leinster, and Montpellier. We've seen the Crusaders last round really put in a tough game against the Guardians. This time in round six, they're going to be up against Leinster. And then, of course, after that, we'll see Montpellier. Where do they come into the party? Not in round seven, but it will be round eight. Oh, they're up against the Guardians again. That is a big, big game there. In round seven, probably all flakes, Crusaders, Dragons, Leinster. Oh, Flakers, Castrates could be a big one as well. We haven't seen the Scarlets in action against subscriber sides this season yet either. So four big games coming up in round seven. And of course, round six, the Crusaders will take on the Dragons. Castrates, all flakes, another big one. But this is the biggest of all. Leinster versus the Guardians of the Crib. And you can see Leinster sit fifth. Equal points with third and fourth, the all flakes and the Dragons. And the Guardians are sixth, one point behind. Very similar record, but the bonus points and points differential going the way of Leinster early on in the season so far. We are pretty much at halfway point as well, so you can be sure to check out a bit of a, a halfway season wrap-up, if you will, at the conclusion of round number six. That should be a, an interesting little thing to check out who the leaders are, who the statistical presence is of season three of the Global Rugby Challenge. But a big clash and a big win for the Flakers that's work harder than they would have ever dreamed of that one. They've come away with the victory nevertheless, and it is a close one, a tight one, but a win is a win, and four points in the bank. They sit top of the table. First time we've seen a subscriber side at the top. Next up, Sunday, be there or be square, or be circle, be oblong, be whatever you like, but you better be there regardless. It's the Guardians of the Crib up against Leinster, sure to be one of the games of the season. The subscriber side's yet to lose to an AI team these are the ones I fear could go the way of the opposition. Of course, Montpellier, another one we will fear. And the Crusaders showed in round five they've got the goods to challenge these sides from our subscriber teams. Until next time, though, thanks for tuning in and watching. If you've enjoyed the series, make sure to hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. And, of course, do not forget to subscribe if you want to tune into the rest of the series. And, of course, potentially be a part of Season 4 as well. Until then, thanks for watching. And, as always, take care.